The Steam frame is official. It has officially been announced. After years of rumors, leaks, echoes across the community, we finally have the official announcement of the Deckard. Or should I say the Deckard? Which is now the Steam frame. Steam have officially announced three new products. The machine, which is their console, and their new controller. But this video is going to be more focused on the Steam frame. But you're going to want to watch to the end. My job today is to give you the honest truth about this device. The exciting parts the disappointing parts. So much to discuss, let's get into it. So what is the Steam Frame? This is Valve's brand new standalone VR headset, but it's not just your typical all-in-one device. There's no more base stations, tracking is all built in, and it runs Steam OS, just like the Steam Deck. This means you can play VR games, play flat games, or stream your games directly from the PC or Steam machine to this device. So let's talk about the specs. Inside it's running the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, paired with 16 gigabytes of RAM. The storage options are 256 gigabytes or one terabyte, plus a micro SD slot that allows up to two terabytes. This also means that you can put the micro SD from your Steam Deck and transfer straight across. In terms of visuals, it's a 2160 by 2160 LCD panel with custom in-house pancake lenses. It offers 72, 120 hertz and an experimental 144 hertz mode, and it's around 110 FOV vertically and horizontally. And in terms of comfort, it has a huge upgrade. The visor is only around 185 grams, with the entire headset, including the battery and the back of the head strap, being a total of 440 grams. 440 grams is insane. It's one of the lightest full-featured VR headsets ever made. With the battery on the back and the pancake lenses on the front, this thing's going to be super comfortable and very well balanced, making it easier for longer sessions. Now, people keep comparing the Steam frame to the Galaxy XR or even the Vision Pro but this thing is more like a supercharged Quest 3. I mean they have a similar resolution, similar FOV, they're both standalone, both have inside out tracking except Steam has a stronger chipset, more RAM, eye tracking, better wireless design and full Steam OS integration. And here is where a lot of people are starting to get disappointed is the fact that it's using LCD screens instead of LED or even OLEDs, and the fact that it's a lower resolution than some of the other devices that we're seeing on the market, such as the 8K headsets available. But that isn't necessarily a bad thing. For some people, it will be disappointing. But there's actually a reason for this, which I'm gonna get into at the end of the video. So let's discuss tracking and pass-through. Valve has ditched the base stations completely, and the Steam Frame will use SLAM tracking, similar to what we've seen in the Pimax videos, which we've just reviewed. It has four outward facing monochrome cameras, infrared illuminators for full dark room tracking, and fast controller detection. So tracking wise, this is pretty solid. But in terms of pass through monochrome in 2026, it's just a little bit disappointing. I mean, a depth sensor with color cameras, even just a simple mixed reality pass through would have taken this headset into a proper XR territory, especially for flat screen games. Right now playing 2D VR PC games, inside a virtual environment with no color pass through. It's just a missed opportunity. We can already do this on the quest, but with color and full mixed reality. Regardless, the tracking system itself is really good and SLAM is definitely better than what we're seeing on all the other XR devices on the market, which is six dog. So now let's talk about wireless transmission and streaming. This is where Valve have absolutely crushed it. The Steam frame includes six gigahertz wireless adapter in the box. So whether you plug that into your brand new Steam machine or your gaming PC, it will give you very low latency wireless PC transmission. This is great for people who don't have Wi-Fi 6E routers. It just creates a direct interference-free connection just for PC VR streaming. No router, no network congestion, no packet loss from your ISPs. And something important to mention is the headset has Wi-Fi 7 dual radios. One handles the stream while the other handles Steam OS Wi-Fi. So there's no bandwidth competition at all. This is one of the best wireless PC VR designs that I have ever seen. So now we're going to talk about the eye tracking and Vovitid streaming. So it has eye tracking built into it and Valve is using it for something pretty genius. What they're calling Vovitid streaming. So for those who don't know, Vovitid rendering is where the game renders specifically where you're looking at with eye tracking. So games run better and you have longer battery life. But with Vovitid streaming, Valve claims that it sends the highest quality visuals 
directly to where you're looking at, reducing bandwidth everywhere else, which Valve claims will deliver 10 times improvement in effective clarity. In theory, this is amazing, and it's actually a great idea, but I'm curious to whether it works smoothly under wireless transmission. And in fairness, Valve is one of those companies that I trust to do this the right way, but we do need to be certain that won't create micro stutters or visual popping. That's something I'll make sure to test in my review. Now let's talk about the controllers. These controllers are actually really good. Not to be confused with their new controllers, but the codename Roy's that we've been discussing for a while. They have magnetic thumbsticks, full D of E tracking, finger sensing, haptic feedbacks. It also has a hybrid layout for 2D games and for VR and 40 hours of AA battery life. And the VR industry has desperately needed magnetic sticks. So it's just a huge win in terms of quality for the controllers. Now in terms of price and release date, Valve hasn't announced anything just yet, but reports are saying that this device will be under the $1,000 mark, which it definitely should be considering that the Quest 3 is in under the $400 mark. Valve did say that they are sending out dev kits right now, but full release can be expected for 2026, which is where sadly Valve announced that the index will officially be discontinued. <laughs> just development of it. So they won't be producing any more, but they will be updating it and continuing to update it like they have with other headsets on the market. And Valve, if you're watching this, please send me a dev kit. Tell me, what do I have to do to receive one of these? I will stream Half-Life Alex from, from start to end if it means receiving one of these, please. And it's time to give the honest truth about the Steam frame. So a lot of people are going to be disappointed. LCD screens, 2160 by 2160 monochrome pass through, no mixed reality features. Meanwhile, other headsets on the market are boasting micro OLEDs, 8K panels, huge FOVs, fancy XR cameras. And although it's going to be disappointing for some looking for this, here's the reality that no one's telling you those high spec headsets perform terribly in actual VR gameplay. They choke on high pixel loads, drop frames, overheat, and need insane PC hardware. So what Valve is doing with this headset is deciding to choose performance over marketing numbers. And because the Steam frame uses the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, which is more powerful than the majority of chips in these XR devices right now, it has lower res panels, eye track voviation, and a specialized streaming system will outperform every single standalone device on the market. It's definitely going to perform better for 2D games than the majority of super high-end devices that we've seen choke when trying to run them at high graphics. So to me, smooth, consistent performance definitely beats 8K screen OLEDs, deep colors every single day. So the headset may not win the spec war, but it might win the performance war. So I've got a question to ask you. What are your thoughts on the Steam frame? And are they making the right decision focusing on VR over XR experiences? Let me know in the comments. But make sure to subscribe and like for more VR news like this. I'll make sure to do a full unboxing and proper review when the device comes out. This is Lordy VR saying hello to Steam Frame and goodbye to the Deckard. Peace.